Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jeremy with National Fire Radio. Today I'm in Lakewood, New Jersey with Chief John Yar of the Lakewood Fire Department. Nice to meet you. Chief, thanks for having us. We're doing this incredible project with Fire and Safety Services, which is the Pierce dealership in New Jersey. They had sold you Engine 5, which is a 2022 Pierce Enforcer. Give me a little background on this engine, the statistics on it, and why we're here today. This engine is the third in a group of four. It's the second iteration of our standardization of the fleet. The uh, 22 Pierce Enforcer, it's got a 1,250-gallon-per-minute uh, pump, 620-gallon water tank. You know, some of the notable features are just it's low and small, and it does engine work good. We walked around before just to get the lay of the land before we hopped on camera, and what I loved about that was the back and forth that we had because there's, it's a very simple build and yet it's very complex and why it's so simple. That's a unique conversation. Yeah, yeah, so, so we spent a lot of time and it, we've gone through a few iterations of this style rig to get to where we are today. And uh, most of it is, is just that. It's a lot of work put in to make it more simple or easier to work off. What we talk a lot about on National Fire Radio when we talk about apparatus design and builds, it's build it for your own community. This engine is absolutely built for your needs, your staffing, the town in which you respond, your first due area, and how you guys operate. Yep. Well, we're gonna take a tour of it together. We're gonna tell everybody about some of the incredible features that you guys put together and talk about this great build here in Lakewood, New Jersey. Chief, so we're going to start the tour off at the front bumper. There's a lot of things happening in here. It's pretty simple, yet it's complex in its thinking. Talk to me about what you guys did here. So this is our trash line. We use it for car fires and dumpster fires or any small fires that, that are outside the realm of our booster nozzle. Uh, it's one of only two pre-connected lines on the truck, the booster line being one of them, and, uh, and this front line. It's just a 100 foot, inch and three quarter with a uh, combination nozzle on it, and there's no trough. It's as simple as pulling three clips, grabbing the middle of the line, which is your coupling right here, walking away from the truck 50 feet and all the hose is off the rig. If all the hose isn't off the rig, when the chauffeur charges it, it'll just push it right off the bumper. So there's no trough to hang up in. It's easy to repack. We operate on some highways in town. Traffic is always a concern. So we want to get back in service right away. So it packs really quick. And uh, it gives us the ability to, to stretch all 100. The gate of Y is here not to add an additional line. It's here to shorten this so we can break it at the coupling, shut this valve, open this valve, and only stretch 50 feet if we right. need to. Uh, again, to get back in service as fast as possible. I think a lot of times departments feel that they need to put the troughs in. We need you know, our supply lines up front, our pony lengths, or we need to put more hose than we actually need. What you guys did here was figured out we need 100 foot off the front bumper, and we're going to set it up just that way. Yep. I love it. Smart play. I like the gated Y2 where you can break it and plug in. That's nice. Also, talk about the lighting real quick and what we have up front. These are the JW speaker uh, headlights. We used to go through headlights left and right, and we all know halogen headlights are yellow. We've been using these since 2015, and then these are the Whalen C6 series light. Okay, Chief, so here we are at the midship of the engine. We're at the pump panel where everything happens, right? This is where the brains of the operation is for fight and fire. Yep. Talk to me about some of the considerations. The real obvious one, right? No cross lays. We went through a couple iterations of rigs where we, we, we had cross lays. We were mainly a cross lay department from like 2014. The varied stretches have, have negated us from using cross lays anymore. So we stretch so many different lengths of hose for, for different applications that it tends to be uh, cumbersome to have cross lays or that many cross lays as needed. So yeah, so no cross lays, right? The pump panel where everything happens. Some of the things I like about this is we went with the smallest pump panel we could, a 45 inch pump panel. So we do that to keep wheelbase down, right? Keep wheelbase down, make the truck more maneuverable. We use the hand wheels. The guys tended to like them. We started out with them on the large diameter discharges and stuff. And we all know pulling the lever sometimes can be a pain in the neck. The hand wheel gives you more mechanical advantage. So if you have two lines off a different diameter, you want to gate a line down, it's very easy to do that. But we also use the FRC Insight Ultimate gauges that have the flow meters built in. The flow meters are not there for us to pump to. We pump to pressure based on our desired flow. We use the flow meters as a, a tool for malfunctions, right? If I have 300 foot inch and three quarter off and I'm pumping 185 PSI to get my 185 at the tip with 50 PSI at the tip, and I look at my flow meter and it's flowing 120 gallons a minute, and my boss is inside yelling at me, hey, hey, you know, I need more water, no more pressure. I know there's a kink somewhere or multiple kinks. So I can tell him, hey boss, you got kinks. On the other hand, if he says the same thing to me, I got no water and I'm flowing 400 gallons a minute, I know we burst the light. 
So we use it as a tool to, to tell us that yes, I'm at 185 psi for 300 foot inch and three quarter and two three quarter off the rig, and oh look at that, I'm at 185, 190 gallons a minute, 170 gallons. I know I'm in the right range. So so it tells me everything is working the way it should. It also allows me to gate lines when they're being flowed. So I know, well, that's not static right now. He's flowing at two and a half, I can bring that down. 50 foot of three and a half. We use three inch inlet on this side and we have our five inch inlet on the other. But yeah, mostly, and then the layout of the pump panel that, that I like is we worked on this very much is from left to right is the way the rig is set up. So I know based on looking at the panel that it's laid out ergonomic, right? That gun's up above, so it's higher. So it's done in a way so that it makes it easier for the pump operator to, to operate the truck. When you find a truck that's built around the way that you operate, it just makes the job simpler for everybody involved. Oh, it absolutely does. Absolutely yeah. makes the job easier and also, you know, uh, less chance of injuries, right? Because you're not climbing up on a rig to get something. For us, we, the guys found that climbing up and down on a cotton mount pump was too much. You know, being manpower strained, if I'm the chauffeur of this rig, I own the line from here to the front door. So I have to chase all those kinks. So I want to be able to do what I can do without climbing up or down. Talk to me about why you guys did what you did with the air tank drains. Air, all our air tank drains are brought out to the to the body. Years ago, all the drains on our rigs were cable drains. During a snowstorm, we had a rig where all the snow got caked up on those uh, cables, froze to those cables, and actually pulled down and released all the air in the rig, and the rig was dead in the water until we got the snow off it and got air back in it. So we just switched to a quarter turn drain and ran the air line out to here. And it, again, it makes it easy to drain. It also is less likely to, to get dirt in it like the pull drains did. They get dirt in them, they hang up and they keep leaking where these you just open them up and then close them back. So the nice thing about that is the attention to detail. If something happened, you addressed it for future builds that it won't happen again. Yeah. And actually, we then uh, retrofitted all our old rigs to this. So, so we went through, and, and once we determined this is the way we wanted to go, we went and retrofitted all the older rigs to, to the same system. All right, Chief, so we're on top. Give me a little breakdown about some of the considerations up here when you guys designed it. We designed the truck around the hose bed. The hose bed was our most important thing. So we, we said, here's our hose bed. These are the lengths and widths and height I want. Now tell me what you can fit for water. So we didn't go with just, a, hey, this truck's usually built with a 500 gallon tank. Am I giving up any water by, by just staying 500 gallons? Yeah, and in that case I was. We ended up with a 620 gallon water tank and 30 gallons of foam. I'm not looking for a big water tank because we're mostly an urban, suburban area with a lot of water, but I want as much water as I can carry on the rig. So here we are, we ended up with 620 gallons. Another important feature to us is having a booster reel up here. A lot of booster reels are controversial, right? They're, they're, we don't use them for structure fires, but it is a quick line to get onto brush fires. We, we talked about extending that to 300 feet. They certainly have their place. They have their place. Absolutely. We need something between the two and a half gallon water can <laughs> That's right. and the inch and three quarter. We went with an extendable gun. With the extendable gun, we were able to do just a 15 inch extension. It keeps it kind of low. We also went with a flat roof. And part of the reason why we went with a flat roof is unobstructed deck gun all the way around the whole rig. The whole design of this apparatus is built around the operational effectiveness of an engine company. Correct. We're trading off maybe higher ceilings on the inside, a little more comfort maybe, but it, the trade-off is an operational and functional engine Correct. company that's designed to make an impact I, when it arrives. We started with our ladder truck that way because it, it gets out of the way of the sure. ladder. And then with this, with the flat roof, keeping this truck down around nine foot high, we can actually operate our aerial ladder right over the top of this. So in the event the engine's not placed in the best spot, the aerial ladder can operate directly over the top of it, not be in the way. Again, operational focus. Yeah, that's the most important thing. All right, Chief, so we're at the rear, the working end of any engine company. Kind of unique design. I mean, this isn't a downtown urban district. This is more suburban. Your district yep. is growing, but it makes absolute sense when you dive in and talk about how you operate. So explain to me the, some of the considerations that you guys put into this build. So this is where the build started, right? We, we started with where we want the hose bed. It's what designed everything else around the truck is designed around having the hose bed where we are, right? Because Hose bed height is a big talk, right? Everyone talks about, oh, I want the hose bed as low as possible. But nobody talks about the length of the hose bed. Because if the hose bed gets really short, the top of the hose goes higher. Correct. So the idea here was, I want to be able to reach my hand lines from the ground. I don't want to ever have to climb up on the truck 
Obviously, some of our shorter members may have to climb up to get it started, <laughs> but they pull that off and then they're able to shoulder the hand lines and walk away from the rig. Nothing's pre-connected. Our inch and three quarter lines, which we have two of them, there's 300 foot inch and three quarter with 500 foot of two and a half. Right? So 800 foot in total length, or two and a half is 800 foot in total length. A lot of people ask, well, what are your chocks here for? Why do they mark, you know, what do they mark? They don't mark anything. We need a chalk when we stretch a hand line and it's there. I don't have to use the one that's in my helmet or in my pocket. I grab that one, that's the initial chalk I use. I save the other one in case I need it inside. Same thing with our supply line is, uh, is three and a half inch hose. A little odd for most fire departments. We used to run three inch and the volunteer departments ran five inch. Uh, we got away from forward laying to every fire. It's the perfect size of hose for us. Our hydrant spacing is much closer now than it used to be. With 800 foot of inch and three quarter or two and a half, I'm able to stop at the fire take off what I need and then drive out to the hydrant. And that's our routine play. And that's what this rig's designed around. One of the most important things was keeping the hose bed long so that we could keep the top low enough. And that's, that's a real important thing. And then we have outlets back here. The beauty of this setup is there's no thought process. The nozzle man is taught one way to stretch hose. We shoulder either 50 or 100 feet, depending on the stretch, they'll grab another 50 or 100 in their arm and go to where they go. They don't deploy the 100 until they get to where they're gonna charge the line because this is their length. So as the nozzle man, the 100 foot is theirs, right? That's what they're responsible for. The backup or hydrant men and the chauffeur is responsible for everything else. So they'll sit here and stretch and we don't break the line until the officer calls to charge. When the officer calls to charge, we know they have all the hose off that they need. So a couple things that you and I discussed, right? And this is what's interesting to me is that the makeup of the town and how it's changing with the different types of construction that's coming in and so on, you might have stretches that are going around to the rear, rear entrances to residential homes or buildings, multiple occupancies with basement apartments and things like that, garden style apartments with long stretches. And so to simplify the process, instead of running cross lays that are dead cut at 200 or 250 or 300, whatever they look like, you put everything off the rear with a reducer down. And so you can estimate that stretch and then take everything you need with you. It's a home run. Yep, yep, it works really well. The town is varied in its makeup, right? We have a downtown area that, that is, is city-like more than anything else, right? We have uh, three-story ordinaries, four-story ordinaries. Then we get to other areas of town where it's, it's much suburban-like. And then we have a rather large industrial park with uh, half a million square foot warehouses, manufacturing, electric generating facilities. Our stretches vary every time we go out the door. Not only was the truck built around the hose bed design, right? Because you needed what you wanted, what you wanted, and so everything else gets built around that. But you also said that the truck was built around working off the ground. I've done it for years and you're climbing up and down and everything and the, the chance for injury is incredibly high. So yeah, we went with, we wanted a, a 60 inch high hose bed at the minimum and then the next thought was, how can I get the top of the hose lower? So that was make the hose bed as long as possible. And then when we arrived at the hose bed we wanted, that's when we said, okay, now design a water tank and tell me how much water you can fit. You know, we, there really is this misconception in the fire service when building apparatus that the lower the hose bed, the better. But a lot of times, a lower hose bed is only gonna give you a six foot bed, not a 10 or 12 foot bed. Yep. And so now your loops get higher anyway. So you're pushing that stack all the way back up where your nozzle man's used to taking his folds and the backup takes his folds. Now when you shorten that bed, they have to carry more folds, yeah. right? So it's a different mindset. Lower doesn't mean it's better. You have to think through the whole build Correct. to make sure it maintains yep. a low and proficient hose pack. Some of the older trucks had the cutout or the old beaver tail with the cutout. By doing the flush pack, we gained an additional 12 inches of hose bed, so it's a no-brainer. That, every time you go longer, this part of the stack gets lower. Which then eliminates a massive back step yep. so that you can come up and you don't have to worry. The ergonomics of this is simple. Yes. It's easy because of the build. Yeah, it's smart. It's not new. New York City's been doing but it forever. We're, but we're coming back around again. Yes. We, we stray. This is how it always happens. We stray. We get away. We go bigger. We always think bigger is better. Yeah. And then you start to see it come back around. And here in Lakewood, you guys have started coming back around where you're building apparatus that are for functionality. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. All right, Chief, so now we're on the officer side of the rig, right? I wanna talk about something with your lap doors that's a little bit unique to you guys. I really haven't seen it before. Explain to me what you, what you did and why it's unique. Lap doors, when you have a double door, you have one latch to open the door, and typically there's a pull chain or right. a latch. We've dealt with, do we want the latch at the bottom? Do we want the latch at the top? Through looking at it, I decided I don't want a latch at all, and we got rid of the latch altogether. So <laughs> what we ended up doing was 
typically they put the two latches on the inner door and then there's one of these latches here and there's a single latch here on the side and i asked the factory if they would put the two latches on the outer door and use the inner door's lip to hold it shut and with the hydraulic struts you don't have to open the door if you don't need to. If I just need the generator, I can just open the one door and that'll stay closed. But if I pull it to a certain point, the door opens up and gives you clear access to the whole compartment without fumbling for a latch. If you're on the same engine or truck every single day, okay, you know what those latches are. But man, as soon as you cross the floor or you ride on somebody else's rig, you're always fumbling on the inside. Yep. This is cool. It's simple and unique. It's well thought out though. It's a very cool design feature. Now the other thing too, which is really interesting to me, is as we stand here, I have my arm on the side rail. I mean, this isn't really commonplace, right? I'm five foot 11 and I can get to the bundles, to the ladders, even to the hard sleeve with not much difficulty. Yep. Why? This is a special low body. Nothing's new in the fire service. So we found some other rig that had it. It was in uh, Prince George County, Maryland. They do the special low. So from here to here is 33 inches instead of 38. So your elbow would have to be five inches higher yeah. like this if you wanted to lean on yep. the old rig, right? That special low body enables everything to drop five inches. Our bundles drop five inches, which in turn brings the ladders down five inches, which in turn brings the hard sleeve down five inches. It's also wasn't a trade-off in compartment size because when we were doing the standard body, we used roll-up doors and roll-up doors need five or six inches to accommodate the roll. So once we went to this in a lap door, we didn't lose anything in compartment space. It stayed the same. It goes right back to the common theme that started this whole build. We want to do everything from the ground. Firefighter friendly, it's ergonomically friendly. You can get to what you need and get to work quickly. Another consideration that you guys took into effect is again, how you operate rescue. Right? If the engine shows up to a job and somebody's hanging out a window, if there's a visible rescue opportunity, they're gonna go for it and do what they can to rescue that person. We want the ladders low. We also want our extension ladder on the outside. So we put our extension ladder on the outside with the roof ladder on the inside. And we did that because it gives me the full 24 foot ladder is the first thing off the rig. I don't have to lower the roof ladder, place it against the exhaust and destroy it. Right? So we grab the extension ladder, we go perform our rescue, and then we go back to our engine company operations. All right, Chief, so here we are. We're at the pump panel on the officer side. Talk to me about some of the considerations here, what you guys thought about. No high-end things, uh, but important to me was uh, we went away from the manual intake valves that are built into the pump. They go bad, what happens? Trucks oh, out of service. Absolutely. So it's gotta come out of service. Pump panel's gotta come off and be replaced. The TFT valves have been really good to us. The ball intake valve, if that goes out of service, I have one in stock. I put a new one on and I'm back in business. That's attached to 35 foot of five inch. That's our front suction, our rear suction, our side suction. This is again, a one trick pony. His 35 footer reaches everywhere, depending on where he spots the rig. So he's just got to learn how to spot the rig. There's no, am I going to use the front? Am I going to use the side? Am I, he's using the same thing every time. So he gets really good at it and there's no mistakes. Keeps the rig out of the street. One of the other things we do over here, we have 200 foot of booster line. We still have some areas of broad there's not much left. They're, they're building every <laughs> Yeah, year, of right? course, right. And I think we have more building permits issued per year than any other town in the state of New Jersey, except wow. Jersey City. So we still use that, but we also keep a 100 foot forestry line. We're able to take the nozzle off, connect 100 foot, reconnect the nozzle, and now we can go 300 feet from the truck. I just want to touch back on the pony length real quick. It's 35 feet. Why not 50? Because Why not 10? Through testing and trying things out, we used to use 10 foot on the front, 25 here, and a 50 in a compartment. We've come to realize that we really only ever really need 35 feet. Even if there's a parked car on the driver's side of the rig, this will get them 15 feet away from that parked car. They can park next to the parked car, stretch it in between the car or over the hood or through the windows as everyone wants to do and go right to the hydrant. And it works out really well for us. It, it really does. On the officer side of the rig, the 35 feet gives you enough length to, to chase those kinks out. Now we always talk about it, right? This side is an S and the other side's a C. And, they, and that's the way that the chauffeurs learn how to connect the truck to hydrants is with the 35 footer and they know where to spot the truck and it ends up working. With our hand lines, we're going fire to hydrant, which is our common play. We want to put the rig at the hydrant as much as we can because they're pumps, not pulls. So they pump water, they push water really well. So we put the rig at the hydrant, we use our largest diameter hose to connect. The other thing I like about this is the cost. Right? When we add a front suction, we're adding all that piping. With every single one of those bends comes friction loss. It diminishes your capacity or you have to go larger. Now you're doing six inch piping. You may or may not adjust your cramp angle for your steering, right? But all that extra stuff also comes maintenance. And this way works for us really well because if something goes wrong with my 35 footer, I take one from stock and put it on a rig and throw this one in the trash. I think it's smart. This is where theory meets practical. Theory meets experience. You put hose in the street, you determine what you need. Too often we narrow in on something that we think we need or how we operate 
when in fact it's not the case. Get out, test your equipment, test your setups, and then determine how to build your trucks around that. So Chief, here we are. We wrapped up our walk around. Beautiful engine. Congratulations on the build. Talk to me a little bit about the build itself and working with Fire and Safety and Pierce. Tell me uh, about the experience. It was great. We have a long relationship with, with Pierce and Fire and Safety. We're like 90% of Pierce fleet. They, they've been excellent to us. Uh, any of the options that we wanted to do, you know, it's just a little bit of research here and there and back and forth, and we always end up getting what we want. It's just a matter of doing your homework. The sales reps are great. So they help us a lot. The factory helped us a lot. You know, being able to go out there for pre-construction and see what's, what's being built, it's a great thing to, to be able to take what you do on a rig and, and make it work for you, you know? Because everything you do affects every other part of the rig. You want to make the rig a certain size, you're going to ruin something somewhere else. So you got it's give and take all over the whole rig. And you hit on something, homework. Do your homework. When you have a dynamic and involved salesman, it helps. But you still have to do your homework and guide that salesman to build the truck that you're looking Correct, for. Correct, because he or she may not know what you're looking for, right? right? Doing your homework, looking at all these sites. A lot of the sales reps or sales companies out there now have websites that show the drawing. Some of the stuff that you guys show, yes. right? Videos of what people have done. Take that job number, bring it to your rep, say, hey, I want this on my rig. How did they do this? And, and they'll work with you, they'll get you to do it. You know, the, the, that's how these rigs came about. Well, all that hard work that you put into that build shows, it's a beautiful engine, it's built for work. And uh, congratulations, Chief John Yar of the Lakewood, New Jersey Fire Department. John, thank you for having us today. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks and uh, thank you for your friendship uh, with Fire and Safety Services and National Fire Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.